Okay, so I got to ask you, you you speak, obviously you speak from a standpoint of a comedian. Um, I, I, I gave my insight, my feedback on the Chris Rock special. Um, and, and, and the majority of what I talked about was the, the quality of his jokes. Um, I felt like like the timing was off in many of them. I felt like you saw the jokes coming. So I just got to ask, as a comedian, it's one thing um, if you're an athlete, you know, you've been running on them same legs for years and years and years. Your knees hurt. You can't move as fast. You can't jump as high. You can't do the things that you once did. Is it the same as a comedian? Because you would think as long as you can talk and as long as you got a sense of humor, you should be as funny as you was 20 years ago, or you damn near should be funnier because you got more content, you got more experience, you got more things that you have gone through. And, and, and now you can take all of these experiences and do what you do naturally. And it just felt like as a comedian, Maybe maybe it's age. Maybe it was awareness of the, the the culture we're living in, but it just didn't feel like even the jokes that that he worked um, to your point for the last year preparing those jokes didn't hit as hard. Well, I'm gonna give you a classic story, brother. You give it. You 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 getting some great 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 uh, behind the scenes content from me, from the great Eddie Murphy. I did. Uh, I'm gonna try to make this story as fast as I can, but I I was on that the uh, the movie The Nutty Professor. And I had an opportunity to sit down with Eddie Murphy and I asked him, I said, Eddie, why aren't you doing stand up anymore? And he said to me something that I didn't understand then, but I fully understand it now and it, and it will relate to what you just said. He said, you know, man, when I first started doing stand up, and, and, and let me preference this by saying this what makes a great stand up comedian, what makes you love a comedian is the, their ability to relate to you for you to look inside their stories and see stories of your own. They might not be the exact same stories, but you see similarities in your life. That's what makes you love those comedians. Well, Eddie Murphy said to that point, he said, you know, I've been rich so long now, man. He said, I want to do stand up, but what am I going to talk about that people can relate to? When I was broken, he said, I was doing the shit. I was talking about shitting in your aunt, falling down the stairs. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh my God, Lord, Lord, Lord help me with it. I was able to talk about things that people out there could relate to their aunt, taking a shit, whatever it was. But he said, what am I going to talk about now? I'm at a, at, a, at, a, at a meeting with these guys and they're talking about paying me $10 million and I'm going to talk about that experience. I'm going to talk about using a bidet. You know, I'm going to talk about, you know, having a private chef. He said, I've lived, and I'm, 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 I'm summarizing what he said, what he said. I've outlived now because of my success. I live in a different world than the people that I'm trying to touch live in. And that makes it harder for me to connect with them. So Chris Rock has done the same thing. You know, when he, when he came out with the, you know, if you look at Chris, Rock, Chris Rock's story, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Chris was more of a mainstream comedian. Before he did the stuff that you like or whatever, he was more known with white people. He went on tour with Martin Lawrence and he said, and I'm telling you what he said. I've read this and I've heard him say it. He said that Martin was going out in front of those people, killing it, you know? And he said he found himself watching the show for being such a fan of Martin, forgetting that he had to go on after him. And he said he struggled behind those shows. So that's why he had all of a sudden he had this newfound thing, man, I got to connect with black people. I got, And so he made it his mission to connect with black audiences and he became that. But you have to realize, He's lived now, man. These people, and you know this, they don't live the life that we do. Chris doesn't have the same obstacles. He doesn't wake up with the same challenges that you wake up with. But the people that are coming to see him, those are the people that live those challenges. So although, like you said, you don't get older, you know, your, your knees don't hurt, but your experience, your ability to relate to the common person becomes harder and harder the more money, the more sheltered life, the more bubble life you live. So we got to give him that. He's not the same person that he was on those specials that you saw financially. Uh, uh, he's not married now. So 
I'm not trying to make excuses for him. I thought it was a brilliant special, but I am trying to relate to what you said as to how athletes get older, they get a step behind. Well, in life, we live different and that causes that step behind or those things that you uh, related to, to sports. And, and, and that's synonymous in, in that sense, if, if I was able to articulate it no, uh, you, enough you, for you, you to did, understand. You did an excellent job. You did an excellent job. Here, here, here's, you know, just at the, and this, you, you speaking from the standpoint of a comedian, which is, which is great. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.